Behind me here, I have my 1999 Chevy Roadtrek 200 Versatile. It's on the 3500 wide bodied model. It has a lot of miles on it, but it still runs really strong with its 5.7 liter engine and a rock solid transmission. It's rear wheel drive and gets approximately 13 to 15 miles per gallon when it's fully loaded. It's got some basically brand new rims and tires on it. It's got lots of exterior side compartments for storage, a heavy duty tow package, and we'll talk a little bit more about it later, but multiple electric systems, including an onboard generator, an auxiliary battery, and a solar panel system on top with four 100 watt solar panels. And at the end of the tour, I'm going to show you my entire entertainment system set up in theater mode, so make sure you stick around for the best part of this vehicle. And as you can see right here, I've got the awning opened up and got it set up to hang out outside. So let's go check out what it looks like. So we have a pretty big awning here. It extends all the way out onto these extension bars right there. Or you can clip the bottom of those support legs right here into these slots right next to the door handles. And out here you can see we have this table out here on kind of a custom built mount. A couple chairs where we can hang out underneath the awning. And this table is actually from the inside of the vehicle. So it really just takes a few minutes to pop that awning out and you can pop it basically anywhere and have shade. Makes it easy to hang it outside and you can also bring out like the cooking equipment and just cook right there on the table as well. So super convenient. A little bit more about the outside of this vehicle. Here we have access to the outside of the refrigerator. And on this side of the vehicle, we have access to the water pump and heater and furnace exhaust as well. But inside here, you'll find the actual water heater itself. Make sure that your water heater is actually full. All you have to do is come up here and pull on this lever. If there's air inside of it, it will release the air first. And once there is water full up inside of that water heater, it will release water. And you can see it just comes right out. So we've had a nice little tour of the outside of the vehicle. Let's head inside and see what we have. So one of the first things that you'll notice when stepping into my RV is obviously the entertainment system. There's the TV right there, 4K UHD, it's an LG TV. But you'll also notice the little coffee table that I have set up right here. I had to remove an extra seat for that, one of these captain seats right here got taken out to put in that coffee table. And you'll also notice that I have some plants here that just kind of make it a little bit more homey. And underneath that coffee table right there, you're going to find the water pump and the water heater, just a few components like that. Additionally, you'll see I added some blackout curtains, both to separate the front cabin and the rear kitchen and bathroom right here from the living room. So that's been very useful, especially when I'm up in the morning and working, using the TV as a computer screen, and I can separate and keep out the light from where my daughter's sleeping in the back. And if I open up this front curtain here, You'll see the front cabin. I have a seven gallon water jug right there, just kind of an extra. This is access to the front cabin. And both of these seats up here, this one and this one can both swivel around 180 degrees. I'll show you that in theater mode later in the video. Now let's turn around and open up the rear curtain here into the kitchen. And you'll see there's the kitchen right there. It goes straight back into the bedroom. We have lots of cabinet space up here. One, two, three, four five, six, seven cabinets up top. This one right here, we painted with blackboard paint. So now that's a blackboard. I teach my daughter how to read and write and stuff on that. Looking the other way into the kitchen, you can see the sink and the propane stove. I have a banana hook over there. You can see more storage up here, as well as the three skylights that are kind of a feature of Road Trek. Here's another little view of the kitchen and how to get more counter space in here because it looks like it doesn't have a lot but actually this drawer opens up and gives you quite a bit more counter space and also that cabinet over there can open to do the same thing i'll show you see magically now it's open however that's not the only thing you can cook with down in these cabinets down here we also have a waffle maker coffee maker we have a stove slash oven slash air fryer we have an instant pot we have two electric burners and just some other little things that are useful for the kitchen of course no kitchen is complete without a fridge this is a dometic three-way fridge so it can run on ac dc and propane it gets really cold it also has a freezer up in top there you can see there's quite a bit of space in it uh, that freezer also holds a lot as well 
Above that is room and a socket for a microwave. Now the bedroom back here has lots of storage underneath. That's where my daughter keeps all of her art supplies and toys. This can also convert into like an L-shape lounge, but I just keep it as a bed. It's big enough for two people. It's between a full and a queen size mattress and it has these stock cushions right here that I put this three inch memory foam pad on right here. It's super comfortable, American made, of course. There's windows that open on either side of it like that to get a nice little cross breeze. Now I'm six foot one and it fits me pretty well. It gives me a few inches of clearance laying in the proper way right there. Someone who's taller could lay a bit more diagonally if they needed to, but at six foot one, I think it gives quite a bit of space to sleep in. I'm never uncomfortable there. Back in the bedroom, I did show you this sliding out piece right here that gives you a little bit more counter space. There's also kind of this bread drawer style cabinet that my daughter just lets her books pile up in like that. So that's fantastic. And since we're speaking about beds, this seat right here and this seat right here, when it's swiveled around, also convert into another kind of cot style bed as well. So that's really nice to have that. You would have another one of those right here, but again, I took out that seat in favor of having this little entertainment system and coffee table that I built myself. Both of the bedrooms, if you convert the bed in the front as well, have privacy doors. You just do that by opening this one, swinging open these little latches here, and then this closes up entirely, closes shut. And when you do that, that bedroom actually stays super warm and toasty, even in really cold environment. And just a little added touch here on the windows in the bedroom, we have Reflectix on all the windows, so no one can peek in at night. Of course, you have to have the windows closed for that. So from this side, this door will open up. And inside, you have the toilet here, and you also have the shower and curtain right here. The toilet's a Thetford. You can go one and two in it pretty easily. It's got the step flush down there. If you want to have a shower, I just have to move this rug right here. And then this leads into the shower drain right there. It's actually a part of the floor itself. So it kind of is just the kitchen floor is the shower pan. Now to operate the shower, it's pretty easy. There's that curtain right there. It just unlatches some of those straps and then it tracks around this track right here that we're following and it circles around and closes up and you can open up that fan as an exhaust and it's kind of just a stand up shower that sits right there above that shower pan that I was telling you about. And so you can shower just inside here and the shower doesn't take up any extra space if you're not using it, which is really, really nice. You've also got extra storage behind the toilet and underneath right there, as well as in the mirror right here. Don't forget about the shower racks and storage space up top as well. So I did promise you a look at the electrical systems in here and how they all work. Two of the electrical systems come stock and you'll see them up on here and I added the third one right here. The first one is going to be the auxiliary system and that's right here. There's a battery in one of the back rear compartments. It's a deep cycle battery and that's gonna power everything in here that is run on DC. So that includes the water pump, the water heater, the fans, and the interior lights. This right here is for the generator. You can start it up right here and watch your hours on it right there. This generator is an Onan Microlite 2800 series. It has just under 55 hours on it and runs like a beauty, especially for its age, because my dad and I, and he's a whiz at this stuff, replaced all the parts in it. So it uh, runs perfectly. Now pretty much every road trek you find is going to have these panels on it for the auxiliary systems and the stock systems. This right here is what I added on myself. It's the control panel for my inverter. It's a Voltworks 1500 watt inverter and it runs down from inside of this rear passenger seat actually where I ended up putting all of my solar panel components other than the solar panels of course. Now to get to that stuff all we have to do is pop off this headrest right here that's velcro slide this up it's on a rail and remove it pop this up and remove that as well and underneath we're going to find the components for the solar system so I'm going to show you that now. I've got two lithium iron phosphate batteries by Renogy back there there's that Voltworks 1500 watt inverter, and that comes with three AC outlets right there. I have two of them plugged in, and then there's an additional two USB plugs as well. And then here is my Renogy charge controller. It's a 60 amp MPPT charge controller, and it comes with this little 
Bluetooth device right here that lets me see how all the batteries and everything is operating through my phone. So with four 100 watt solar panels on the roof, it's really easy to charge up those two batteries and they provide me energy for everything I need to do in here from the TV to all the cooking, to coffee making, to charging all my phones and cameras and things like that. So it's been a really useful system. So let's check out how this living room is going to look when I actually have it in theater mode. Right now it's set up. I just sit there if I'm working and then I can plug in an HDMI cable into the TV and kind of have a big screen to work on. But let's see what it looks like when it's actually in theater mode. So you can see what I've done here is swivel around the two front captain seats and then move the TV, swiveled it over to set it up like that. And now you have one, two, three seats that can sit and watch that from the inside with the curtains closed, the skylights kind of closed off. And with the sound bar right there, it just makes for a really nice home theater experience inside of this RV. And if I have it over on that part right there, kind of swiveled back, I can always just sit right here, or just pick any seat that I want. And I can watch a movie by myself if I want to, or I can even put on my Bose headphones, my wireless headphones and play video games if I want through my computer running an HDMI cord. So there are three things that I really love about this vehicle. Number one is that it's really compact. So it makes it easy to park basically in any parking spot and drive around as well. You know, you can find some national parks, for example, where they limit the length of a vehicle to 22 feet, for example. This is just a touch over 20 foot, so it can basically go anywhere. Also, it's really nice to use as a stealth camper. So say, for example, you want to visit a city, but there's nowhere to camp or you just don't want to pay for a campground. This can basically just park anywhere. It kind of looks like a traditional work vehicle, and yet you're still just camping out in like the middle of a city. And lastly, because it's a member of the road trek community, anyone who sees those three windows on top when you're driving down the road, for example, they'll give you a wave if they're a member of the community. Uh, people will stop and talk to you if they have a road trek, for example. And it just makes you feel like you're kind of in a nice little group of people who have the same vibe and are just kind of relaxed and cool about life and enjoying their little RVs. Hey, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, but I'm going to have some other videos up around here. One's going to be a tour of when I first got this vehicle. Another will be about why I love living in a Class B RV and then some other videos that you might like as well. Let me know down in the comments what you think about living in an RV like this full time. See you in another video. Peace.